Okay, hello everyone. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the internal model type control for partial differential equation systems. So throughout the presentation, we're going to consider a situation where we have a linear partial differential equation with some dedicated inputs u, um, possibly a vector valued or even a function valued signal. Then we have some measured outputs of the system and then possible external disturbance signals. And in our main control problem, the output regulation problem, we uh, are aiming to design a control signal in such a way that the out measured output of the system converges to a predefined reference signal y ref when t goes to infinity and this happens despite the external disturbance signal w and in addition we require that our control law, law is robust in the sense that the same controller will still work even if our linear pde system experiences some changes or the parameters uh, experience some perturbations or the model itself contains some uncertainty. The uh, output regulation for linear PDE systems is useful in many practical applications. For example, in temperature tracking control or control of fluid flows, in which case these more systems can be modeled with convection diffusion equations. Also, in the case of tracking control for flexible manipulators, so robotic arms which may have flexible components or very long uh, cranes, crane arms. And in addition, in acoustic design, it might be useful to be able to reject some unwanted periodic noises or vibrations. And the robustness of the control law gives us a very valuable property that we don't need to have a very exact model, but instead our controller will still work even if we have under some modeling uncertainty or uh, changes in the system parameters. But it also allows us to uh, reliably use approximations when designing the controller parameters. And in the aim of this talk is to just discuss the main steps and algorithms in internal model controller design when we are controlling PDE systems. I'm going to also highlight some differences between Con internal model control for ODE systems and PDE systems. And I'm going to present a few examples and these uh, I'm going to go into detail in presenting all the design steps in these examples just in order for everyone to get a good idea of how, how this control process works. So let's start with the basics. In the output regulation problem, we assume that our reference and disturbance signals uh, have this form so that they are consist of a finite number of individual frequency components with possibly unknown amplitudes and phases. But we assume that we know the frequencies of the reference and uh, disturbance signals. So we assume that these omega k are known values. If these are not known, they can usually uh, often be approximated or uh, estimated from from various signals. But in the context, so in the context of internal motor control, it's useful to assume these frequencies to be known. And the type of control we are interested in is dynamic error feedback controller, which means that, and in this control scheme, the controller C is another dynamic system, which takes as its input the tracking error, which is the difference between the actual output Y, 
and the intended reference signal y ref and based on this information and its internal state it produces the control signal to the uh, actual system and when we consider reference and disturbance signals of the class that we outlined before the robust output regulation problem is solvable under very minimal assumptions so what we basically only need to know is that our system p is stabilizable and detectable in a suitable sense and the system doesn't have any transmission zeros at the complex frequencies of the of the reference and disturbance signals and this is a classical type result in the context of control of linear ODE systems but the same result also continues to hold for a very large class of linear PDE systems and one of the fundamental results in uh, robust output regulation is the so-called internal mode of principle which characterizes all the controllers that solve the robust output regulation problem and this theorem which uh, in its original form dates back to the mid 1970s tells us that a controller solves the robust output regulation problem precisely if it achieves stability of the closed loop system consisting of the control and the plant and in addition the controller contains a so-called internal model of those frequencies omega k which appear in those disturb reference and disturbance signals that we consider and the this result indeed is a classical result for linear ODE systems but it has also uh, been extended for large classes of infinite dimensional linear systems and also linear PDE systems here the interesting part may be the concept of the so-called internal model and the main idea here is that all of the frequencies omega k should also be uh, present in the internal dynamics of the controller there are several ways of defining the actual internal model even for linear ODE systems and one possible way to do this is to just to require that uh, all of the complex frequencies of the reference and disturbance signals must be eigenmodes or eigenvalues of the controller dynamics and each of these eigenmodes should have geometric multiplicity of at least an um which is at least the number of the outputs of our system one of the nice things about the internal model principle is that it also gives us a way to solve the robust output regulation problem so what this fundamental result tells us that in order to uh, produce a controller which uh, achieves robust output tracking we need to do two things the first one is that we need to include a suitable type of internal model into our controller dynamics and in addition in the second step we should use the rest of the open parameters and the structure of the controller we have in order to achieve closed loop stability and once these two things are completed the internal model principle tells us that we have a controller which solves the robust output regulation problem the first one of these steps which consists of the construction of the which consists of the con construction of the internal model is usually something that can be fairly straightforward because the internal model uh, the internal model is determined completely by the frequencies of our reference and disturbance signals and because of this it can have a very um, precise and very well-known structure on the other hand the second step 
may be the place where we need to work uh, work a little bit more and especially in the case of control of linear PDE systems this is often the main challenge to achieve closed loop stability but even for this step there are uh, constructive methods for doing this so let's now take a closer look at the design process of produ uh, constructing an internal model controller so let's start with the case of a uh, ODE systems so in the case of ODEs, our design process starts with the model that we want to control. So our linear ODE system uh, is described by a system of differential equations, and it may be, for example, a model of an electrical circuit or some mechanical system. And the first step we do when starting to build our controller is to represent our ordinary differential equation model in the standard form as a finite dimensional linear system with some matrices A, B, C, and D. And the main reason we want to do this is that we get access to the internal model principle because this uh, it's valid for this system linear systems in the standard form. And the next stage, in the next stage, we would go into the literature and look, look at all the available different controller structures, which uh, are based on internal models. And we would make a choice of one of these, choose one of these internal model structures, uh, controllers for the basis of our own controller. And there are indeed several different options available and we would make a choice based on the basic properties of our system that we're controlling for example uh, using the knowledge whether of whether or not our system is stable or or if it has some additional passivity properties but indeed when, once we have uh, made our choice we have a basic structure for an internal model controller and this structure uh, has a place for uh, including the internal model and then it has some additional parameters. So in the next stage we would choose the parameters of our controller. So we would in, in, in the first stage construct the internal model within our controller by using the knowledge of our reference, particular reference and uh, disturbance frequencies and as well as the number of outputs of our system and this would give us uh, knowledge of what how the parameters of the internal model are chosen in the second step we would then choose the rest of the controller parameters in such a way that the also the closed loop system becomes stable and the uh, red sort of the recipe for choosing these parameters is something that we usually get as part of our controller, uh, design, controller structures manual from directly from the literature and once we have completed these two uh, steps of tuning the controller parameters we can invoke the internal model principle which tells us that since we have an internal model in our controller and closed loop system is stable we our uh, controller indeed solves the robust output regulation problem okay let's now take a look at, at how the process goes if we are interested in uh, controlling a pde model instead so in this situation the system that we would me controlling would be described by a linear partial differential equation so if we're interested in temperature control or fluid flow control maybe we would be um, our model could be a, a convection diffusion equation with some control inputs and measurements so at a glance the process looks quite similar to the ODE case but there are a few instances where we need to be more careful so let's Let's take a look at how the process goes. Uh, 
So in the first stage, we would again uh, try to express our PDE model as a system within some class of systems. And this is a, already a place where we need to be a little bit more careful than in the corresponding ODE situation because there is no one particular choice for a class that contains several PDE models. But we'll come back to this choice of this class a little bit later, but let's now for the moment assume that we have a standard representation of our PDE model in, uh, within some class of systems. What we would then do again is to go into the literature and look for internal model control structures, which are uh, app, which we can use for members of this class of systems that we're operating in. And in again, we would look for uh, a controller which is compatible with the pr basic properties of our systems. For example, uh, there would be different choices for stable. Uh, systems or unstable systems and passivity properties of the system could maybe make a difference as well. But there are again um, different choices available and we would make a choice that fits together with our the properties of our system. And then uh, this controller that we choose would again have some kind of a general structure and it would have a place for the internal model and then some additional structure and parameters for achieving closed loop stability. And in addition, again, we would, as part of our controller design, we would use the knowledge of our frequencies of the reference and disturbance signals to construct the actual internal model in our controller. And then uh, in the second stage of the controller tuning, we would aim to choose all of the rest of the controller parameters in such a way that we again have closed loop stability. And with these steps completed, we would again want to go and uh, use the internal model principle to deduce that we have robust regulation. But here again, we need to be careful uh, because if we want to invoke the internal model principle we need to choose a version of the internal model principle which is valid for this class of systems that we where we have represented our PDE model and so the version of the internal model principle we want to use has to be tied with this choice of the class of systems we we're operating in. So, but uh, supposing that such a internal model principle exists, this result ideally uh, directly gives us knowledge that since we have an internal model in our controller and our closed loop system is stable, we also have that our we can deduce that our controller solves the robust output regulation problem. Okay, uh, as we saw, uh, the first step uh, where we need to be a little bit careful is the choice of this class of uh, systems where we can represent a, a PDE model. There are a couple of uh, choices for this, and um, let's now discuss these, uh, the implications of these choices. Since we are working with the partial differential equation systems, the first uh, possible choice of a class that comes to mind is a class of partial differential equation systems. And what I mean by a class of PDEs would be some kind of a parametrized collection of PDEs of similar type, for example, convection diffusion equations or hyperbolic PDEs, uh, which, and this collection would have some free parameters, like uh, physical parameters of the system and some parametrized uh, 
boundary con uh, conditions for the system, which would allow us to take a single PDE with specific parameters and represent it this cho with suitable choices of these parameters represented within this class. And this kind of a class should also ideally allow for different types of input and output configurations. So depending on what, where our inputs are physically located or uh, what type of inputs these are, we should be able to uh, choose the parameters in this class so that we can represent our model as a, in the standard form. And there are uh, several such classes available. One or, uh, example of these would be the distributed port Hamiltonian systems, which indeed is a class of parameterized cl uh, collection of partial differential equations, usually uh, describing hyperbolic PDEs on either one dimensional or multi dimensional spatial domains with boundary control or distributed control and observation. The other class that uh, uh, is worth mentioning here would be the so-called hyperbolic systems representing hyperbolic PDEs which can be built out of transport equations and also maybe reaction convection diffusion equations with very general parameters could be one class as well. Okay. But the second option, and this is the one that I use in my own work, is to represent the linear PDE model, again, as a linear system, but this time on an infinite dimensional state space. So abstract linear systems uh, look a lot like the traditional finite dimensional linear systems. But instead of matrices A, B, C, and D, you instead have linear operators, which operate on the infinite dimensional vector space X. And the, uh, the theory of abstract linear systems is well developed. There's a very large body of literature on this topic. And there are also conveniently several subclasses of abstract linear systems based on the differing, possibly differing properties of these A, B, C, and D. And you can usually find uh, one, at least one class where you can represent your linear PDE system. Okay, so the uh, choice of this class of systems that we consider also makes an effect has an impact on the internal model controller design. So in particular, uh, the availability of the internal model principle is something we should take into account. So if we make a choice of representing our PDE within a class of PDEs, then the bad news is that I don't know any particular version of the internal model principle that would be valid for any class of PDE systems. But the good thing is that there are still several internal model based controller designs available in the literature. So, um, and you can use this for large classes of PDE systems. On the other hand, if we choose the abstract linear systems as a base class, then the good news is that there are several versions of the internal model principle available in the literature. And these are applicable for differing classes, for the different classes of infinite dimensional linear systems. There's been a lot of work on this topic, including my own, own research into it. And there are also several different types of internal model controller structures, which you can directly apply on the abstract representation of your system to get a controller which um, solves the robust output regulation problem. So 
in light of these facts, the choice of the abstract linear systems may already seem advantageous, but there's also a trade-off in this, in this choice. So if we choose the abstract linear systems, uh, then we need some kind, at least some kind of base knowledge on the theory of infinite dimensional systems, just in order to represent our PDE as, a, as an abstract linear system in the first stage, and then in addition, just to uh, be able to interpret the results that are available for these kinds of systems on internal model control design. And this is something that can be technically demanding. Uh, on the other hand, if we um, represent our PDE within a class of PDE systems, and if there is an internal model controller available for this class in the literature, then this, um, this route usually leads to fairly straightforward design in the controller construction. But nevertheless, I'm, uh, um, I strongly encourage and I uh, want to advertise the benefits of this abstract linear systems route, especially the availability of ready-made controllers. Uh, but due to the fact that there are, um, there are these technical challenges, I want to dedicate the second part of my talk just to highlighting and explaining how this um, controller design process works when we use these abstract linear systems as our base class. And for this, I will uh, just go through step-by-step -step, uh, construction of internal model controller for two particular uh, PDEs. These PDE models are intentionally chosen to be fairly simple, but what I want to re um, emphasize here is that these same design steps also um, are exactly the steps you need to complete in order to control a more complicated PDE model. I'm also going to keep the terminology uh, fairly simple, so I'm not going to present all of the uh, technical details and technical terminology, but there's not that many things that I'm going to uh, skip here. So uh, actually what is uh, swept under the rock here is not too complicated or scary in my view. So let's start with, uh, with our first example. And so for this example, we're going to consider a one-dimensional heat equation. And this is what I would call the uh, some of the simplest example of a PDE from the point of view of abstract infinite dimensional systems theory. So this heat equation describes the uh, evolution of the temperature profile in a con heat conductive ma material uh, that is essentially a one dimensional object. So for example, a metal rod. And um, on the first line here, we have the actual partial differential equation and the unknown state variable here, V xi t, at each uh, describes the temperature of this metal rod at position xi along the length of the metal rod and at time t. Uh, on the second line, we have the boundary control, uh, boundary conditions of the heat equation, and these con uh, conditions shown here uh, uh, represent the situation where the ends of the metal rod are insulated from their environment, so there is no heat flux through the uh, through the boundaries of the metal rod. So in this P, this is indeed a partial differential equation because we have the first order time derivative here on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have the second order uh, 
derivative with respect to the spatial variable. And then the, uh, in our model, the control input and the disturbance act on the, appear on the right hand side of the PDE model uh, through these uh, spatially varying functions B and BD. And with different types of uh, choices of B, we can represent the uh, situations where we control different part, the temperature distribution on different parts of the boundary. So for example, with a suitable choice, we can re uh, investigate a situation where we are allowed to heat a, a add or remove heat from the first half of the metal rod. Uh, correspondingly, the measured output is a weighted average of the uh, weighted average of the temperature along the metal rod. And again, with a suitable choice of a weight function, we can, for example, have the output to be the average temperature over the second half of the metal rod. So, you know, as the first step in our controller design, we would like to represent this model as an abstract infinite dimensional system. And for this, we choose the, in order to do this, we choose the state variable of our system at time t to be the full temperature distribution over the metal rod at that particular time. So at each time, the state x t is a function of the spatial variable and because of this this um, state variable is indeed an infinite dimensional object because it is a function um, and then what we would like to do in the second step is to choose our the parameters represent our pde model in a form which looks a lot like a finite dimensional linear ODE, but now indeed we have an infinite dimensional state variable and these A, B, B, D and C are operators instead. I'm not going to go into too much detail in how these choices are done, but this is something that's very standard for the, for the one dimensional heat equation and you can see, uh, find it in the basic textbooks. Uh, basically, intuitively, you can already relate the corresponding terms. For example, here the time derivative on the left-hand side and the um, state term on the right-hand right side, as well as these input and disturbance input terms of, uh, on the PDE. And intuitively speaking in this way, we can see that the operator A should correspond to second, uh, the second order partial derivative with respect to the spatial variable here. And this is indeed the case. And if you just follow the standard method of writing the PDE as an infinite dimensional system, we can indeed see that A is a, in particular a second order differential uh, operator. And then the rest of the operators have very specific forms and are nicely behaving operators as well. So now we can go into the actual internal model controller design. So in order to keep things simple, let's just consider the uh, tracking of a reference signal with a single frequency component with some frequency omega and some unknown amplitude a and phase theta and let's uh, assume that there are no external disturbances adding several frequencies and uh, adding a disturbance signal is not at all difficult from a controller design point of view but for this presentation i want to simplify things as, as much as possible also, our model only has a scalar valued input and let's keep it that way. So again, the consideration of 
multi-input, multi-output systems is not at all difficult, but uh, the formulas remain simpler for the CISO systems for the, in this talk. And I'm also going to just talk about one particular observer-based controller structure. There are other controllers available in the literature, but I uh, want to focus on just one of them now. So now that we have a representation of our system uh, as an infinite dimensional system, we can go into the literature and try to find an internal model uh, controller, which matches the properties of the system we have in terms of its stability properties and the properties of this, especially the operators B and C. And for our system, uh, there, is, so there are several options and one of them comes from the work of uh, Eero Immonen and uh, also Hamelan and Pohjalainen. And this controller is again an infinite dimensional linear system and its state consists of two parts, zeta1 and x hat. So the first part of, uh, the, sta part of the state is determined by an ordinary differential equation, really on a finite dimensional space. And this is actually the uh, actual internal model of our controller. And then the second part of our state is determined by a linear system which looks a lot like the original system with uh, the parameters a, b, c. And this part in fact has the role of an observer of our original system and it is uh, used in the stabilization of the closed loop system. And this control, the parameters of this controller this controller are the matrices G, G1, G2, and K1, as well as two linear operators L and K2, which appear here. The in construction of the internal model, as I promised, is fairly simple and straightforward. The instructions for tuning this controller parameter says that the matrices G1 and G2 uh, need to be constructed in a specific way so that based on the knowledge of the frequencies of our reference and disturbance signals and for this for our case where we have just a sinusoidal signal with one frequency as well as one single scale valued output of our system our matrices g1 and g2 look like this and then for choosing the rest of the parameters, and there are also specific instructions that come along with the theorem of, uh, from Immonen's work. And these three operators should be chosen in such a way that these two abstract linear systems shown here are stable in a suitable sense. And if we for a, uh, for a moment forget that we're dealing with infinite dimensional systems, it's easy to see that the operator L here has the role of an output injection to our original system. Uh, so it should be a stabilizing output injection. On the other hand, the operators K1 and the matrix K1 and operator K2 should be chosen in order to, uh, so that they are a stabilizing feedback gain to this cascade system consisting of our uh, original plant as well as the internal model. And there are direct uh, methods within the uh, infinite dimensional systems theory that can be used in order to solve these stabilization problems. But in fact, uh, since we started out with a PDE model, we also have a very useful option to convert these problems back into the PDE world and to rewrite them as PDE stabilization and injection problems. So I'm going to illustrate this here with this more complicated cascade system stabilization problem. So if we use the knowledge of the operators A, B, C that come from the representation of our 
original PDE model as well as the matrices G1 and G2. Then we can rewrite this uh, cascade abstract system stabilization problem as a feedback stabilization problem for a PDE ODE cascade. So in this problem we now have a cascade system consisting of a heat equation as well as a finite dimensional linear ODE system. And choice of K1 and K2 in the abstract domain is equivalent to choosing a matrix K1 as well as a function K2 in such a way that this cascade system is exponentially stable. Uh, because we're dealing here with a parabolic system, there are different options of uh, choosing the stabilization parameters. One option would be to use numerical Galactic approximations and design, uh, use LQR design for choosing K1 and K2. Alternatively, since we're dealing with a cascade, it's also possible to uh, use the so-called forwarding approach to uh, break this cascade stabilization problem into simpler uh, stabilization problems and uh, choose K1 and K2 in that way. But whichever uh, approach we choose, when we have chosen this K1 and K2 in such a way that uh, this cascade system is stable, we have all the parameters of our controller available. So at this stage, our controller design theorem tells us that we have constructed an infinite dimensional controller, which is an abstract system and it solves our robust output regulation problem. But since we started out with a PDE model, uh, it's very useful to be able to in, uh, instead represent our controller as a PDE type model as well. And we can do this by, again, using the knowledge of our infinite dimensional uh, linear representation of our PDE to convert our abstract controller into a controller with PDE dynamics. And when we do this conversion, we get a controller which solves the robust output regulation problem and it has this form where we have the original internal model dynamics which haven't changed at all but we have just plugged in the concrete internal model parameters here and then the second part of the controller is an observer copy of our original heat equation where we have the stabilizing feedback gains K K1 and K2, as well as the output injection gain, which comes from the uh, construction of the controller parameters. Okay, uh, we can also do, do simulations, but functionality of the controller is uh, guaranteed by the theorem that we already saw before. And because our system controller has an internal model and we have stabilized, successfully stabilized the closed loop system, the internal model principle guarantees us that we have robust output regulation. Okay, uh, what did we learn from this example? In as I mentioned before, in my view, uh, the one-dimensional heat equation we consider is one of the simplest examples from point of view of representing a PDE as an abstract linear system. Uh, this was, so this was a nice introductory example on, on internal model control as well. One of the nice things that we learned along the way as well is that in our control controller we had these open parameters that we needed to choose based on some output injection and stabilization problems. But instead of solving these problems in the abstract domain, we were able to also convert them back to PDE stabilization problems. And this gives us 
a lot of uh, flexibility and additional choice in the types of methods we want to use. And especially this allows us to use PD stabilization methods in tuning our controller parameters. And finally, as well, our original controller was an abstract linear system, but again, using the representation, using the original representation of our PDE model, we were able to rewrite the abstract controller as a PDE ODE system. And this is a much more desirable answer to the original control problem because we start out by controlling, uh, wanting to control a PDE model. So a natural answer to this question is a controller which also has PDE uh, additional ODE dynamics. So uh, what was the reason that made this uh, example simple from the point of view of abstract the uh, infinite dimensional systems theory? One of the things that contributes to this is that we are we're considering input and output uh, in our PDE, which affected the, uh, the interior of the spatial domain of the heat equation. Okay, so if we want to make our life a little bit more complicated, we can instead look at a situation where the control and observation live on the boundaries of the spatial domain. Uh, for this purpose, let's consider control of a so-called two by two hyperbolic system. So this uh, model has two state components, V and W, and where and it consists of two transport equations. So this model is basically like two conveyor belts moving in opposite directions. And the two state components, these two parts of the state are coupled both through the boundaries and the endpoints of the belts, as well as through the or along the length of the belts. Uh, this interior coupling here is represented by these two terms on the right hand side. And now in this model, the uh, control doesn't appear on the right hand side of the PDE, but instead it is uh, it appears as a term in one of the boundary conditions, namely at the position uh, one here. Uh, correspondingly, the output is no longer an uh, average value of, of the part of the state, but instead it is a pointwise value at the other end of the, of the belts. And in the PDE, terminology, this model has boundary control and boundary observation. And we can then, uh, when we proceed to control a design, uh, the first step is again to um, represent our uh, system, PDE system as a member of an abstract linear system of an infinite, on an infinite dimensional space. We can again do this, but and this time we choose the state of our system to consist of both the uh, unknown functions of the PDE, V and V and W. And when we do this, we can indeed construct a representation of the, this hyperbolic system within the class of so-called regular linear systems. And this time again, the fun uh, state space is infinite dimensional. It uh, consists of two function spaces, and this model has scalar valued input and output. And this more, uh, system looks a lot like the one we saw before for our heat equation. So the question here is why is this more difficult? The answer to this is that because we have the boundary input and output in our system, the class of abstract systems is larger than before. And in particular, uh, 
the properties of these two operators B and C are uh, weaker than the comp uh, than the correspond the properties of the corresponding B and C for the heat equation. Uh, but again, still for this regular linear system uh, class, there's a lot of literature and uh, well-developed techniques and as well as an inter version of the internal model principle. But the other thing that makes things slightly complicated, more complicated here is the fact that when we go into the stabilization problems that we encounter in, in our internal model control um, algorithm, we also need to do stabilization using boundary output injection and boundary feedbacks. And these further complicate the issues. Uh, so we are indeed dealing with, uh, with a PDE model, which is already fairly challenging from the abstract point of view. So, but let's uh, look at how, uh, how we can deal with this situation. Uh, as I already mentioned, the good news is that there is indeed an in, in, internal model principle that is applicable to the class of regular linear systems. And this is due to my earlier work on this topic. The bad news is that uh, while there are also constructive controller designs, these controller constructions do not really handle these bo uh, the boundary feedbacks and boundary output injections very well. What I mean is that some of these controller uh, constructions are simply not applicable or they, they cannot handle this at all, or alternatively, the resulting controller that comes out is somehow unnecessarily complicated. And so when I was preparing for this talk, I took a look at this situation and I thought about it and I thought that uh, this is indeed not a very, not a very nice situation. So what I thought would be the best way to handle this is to just sit down and uh, develop some new results uh, that would fix this issue. And luckily enough, I was able to do this. Uh, so uh, I was able to come up with some new results on the con controller construction for regular linear systems. So that using these sta uh, stabilizing boundary feedbacks and output injections that we need here actually becomes very simple. Likewise, the, na uh, the co resulting controller that comes out is a very natural controller. So we can indeed use these new results that I mentioned for the control of our two by two hyperbolic system. And rather than explaining uh, in detail what the actual controller is, I'm just going to say that these new results tell us that there is a controller which looks formally exactly the same as the controller we saw before by uh, in the case of our heat equation. So again, we have a controller state consists of two parts. One is determined by our internal model and the other one is an observer copy of our original system. Here again, the matrices G1 and G2 contain the internal model of our controller and the operator L is the output injection to stabilize our original system. And the K1 and K2 should again be chosen to stabilize a cascade consisting of our plant and the internal model. And these new results that I developed also again guarantee that we can um, convert the problems of choosing L and K1 and K2 to corresponding PDE stabilization and output injection problems. So in order to choose L, we, uh, we, we can indeed investigate a PDE problem related to output injections in the hyperbolic system. So to choose our controller parameters reduces to the problem of choosing a scalar parameter LB as well as two functions L1 and L2 so that this 
uh, a hyperbolic system is uh, exponentially stable. And this is exactly the kind of problem that has been um, investigated a lot in the literature, in the PDE control literature. And it's well known that this can be solved using the technique of backstepping. So one of the nice things about being able to convert the choosing of our operator L into a PDE stabilization problem is that we can immediately tap into the literature on stabilization of PDE systems and utilize known results in choosing our par the parameters of our controller. Similarly, the uh, stabilization of the cascade system uh, in the abstract domain can be converted to a stabilization of a PDE ODE cascade. So now we, in order to choose our controller parameters, we should choose a matrix K1, a scalar parameter KB, as well as K1 and K2 functions in such a way that this uh, cascade system consisting of an ODE and a PDE becomes exponentially stable. Again, this is a kind of a problem that has been studied a lot in the ba uh, backstepping literature. So we could immediately pick one of the PDE backste uh, cascade, backstepping cascade results to uh, solve this problem. Alternatively, again, we could apply the forwarding approach to simplify this problem of cascade stabilization into simpler PDE stabilization problems. But whichever method we choose, we have now constructed all our parameters using stabilization results. And we can finally, again, uh, represent our original abstract controller as a coupled PDE ODE system instead. And this controller contains the original uh, internal model as well as the observer copy of our hyperbolic system. And here in blue I've highlighted the tuning parameters of our controller which we obtained as solutions of the stabilization problems. Okay, so now we've considered two different examples on the on internal model control. And these indeed had different properties, but we also at the same time saw that once we have available internal model controller result, the design steps for uh, constructing the internal motor controller are actually fairly similar. And we had two examples. One, the simpler one had in-domain control and observation and the uh, more difficult one had boundary control and observation. And I know that here I've painted this picture where the in-domain control is easy and boundary control is difficult, but this is not at all the case. And this is just like uh, this juxtaposition is just made for the purpose of uh, comparing these two examples. So there are several situations where the boundary control and observation do not make things more complicated at all. For example, one, uh, important situation is that if our system is already stable, then it's possible to use a finite dimensional controller which only contains the internal model. And due to the work of Rebarber and Weiss from 2003, this is applicable directly to a very cl large class of linear PDE systems, almost anything that you can think of. On the other hand, if you're dealing with parabolic PDEs, even with boundary control, this uh, uh, you can usually use a different kind of uh, con finite dimensional controller design, which is based on Galerkin approximations. And sometimes also, even if you're considering a situation where the 
control and observation act on the boundary of the PDE. But if your model contains parts which model the dynamics of the actuators and the sensors, then this actually makes the abstract representation of the PDE much easier and it provides much better and nicer properties for the actual uh, abstract linear system. So dynamic models for actuator and sensor dynamics actually make things easier from the abstract point of view. But here the small asterisk means that in, uh, while I say that these are easier from the abstract point of view, then uh, these dynamic sensor and actuator models usually make these stabilization problems a lot more difficult. And this is something that I, I don't want to downplay the challenge in these control problems at all. But from the point of view of construction of the actual internal model uh, controller, things are fairly convenient from the abstract point of view. Uh, so in summary, while I, I don't want to convey a message that boundary control and observations are make things always make things difficult, but it's just that sometimes there's a combination of things like now that our PDE is hyperbolic, we have boundary control and observation, and then we need uh, boundary feedbacks and uh, boundary output injections in the stabilization problems. And this combination can be challenging. And this is, was exactly the case which we handled in our hyperbolic system example. And this was, uh, we were able to still uh, do internal model control design using these new results. I haven't really presented much uh, background on the uh, history of the internal model control for PDEs, but there's a lot of uh, work and from for the internal model principle for abstract linear systems, the work has already already started in the 1970s with the work of Bart. There's also a lot of work on just internal model uh, control design for PDE models directly. So in this talk, I focused on using the abstract infinite dimensional systems theory, as well as uh, generalized versions of the internal model principle in controller design for PDEs. But in control of a PDE system, Another valid approach would be to just do controller design for this individual PDE model without uh, representing it in a class of abstract systems. Uh, so in this design process, you would just take your PDE and then design some internal model controller having this ODE internal model uh, dynamics as well as some observer PDE dynamics. And then you would choose the other parameters of your system to achieve closed loop stability. And once you have fixed your control structure and parameters, what you would then need to do as part of the control process is to prove first that your controller achieves closed loop stability. Then as the second item, you should prove that the controller achieves output tracking and disturbance rejection and finally also prove separately that the controller uh, tolerates perturbations and changes and uncertainty in the parameters of the system. So this is indeed a, another way to get from a PDE model to robust regulation. But in my view the advantage of the abstract design approach is that you don't you can rely on the internal model principle so this guarantees you robust tracking without having to prove the output tracking property and the robustness individually in the case of each new PDE that you consider and this way I think the abstract approach is a powerful tool to avoid this like repetitive work.
So just to conclude the talk, I focused on this abstract approach to internal model control of PDEs. And I've illustrated this with uh, examples where we did the controller design for a heat equation and a hyperbolic equation. And what I would hope is that this presentation gives you the like a motivation and spark to also experiment with these internal model design techniques for uh, regulation of PDEs. And these are indeed powerful tools and these abstract tools do come with, uh, with some level of challenge. But if you are motivated to uh, use them, I'm sure that they, they will not be uh, too difficult. And uh, at the very least, if you are having trouble in applying these abstract methods, then do not simply abandon the problem, but just write me an email and, I, and I'm happy to help you out with this control design process. And one of the last thoughts that I want to convey here is that we saw in our examples that the abstract techniques are a powerful tool in converting these problems of choosing the controller parameters into PDE stabilization and output injection problems. And this way we can directly tap into the literature on the stabilization of PDE models. And this is a much wider body of literature than internal model control of PDEs. And as we saw, solving these stabilization problems is basically all we need to do in order to achieve our controller design. Everything else comes directly from the controller structure. So if you have a PDE model and if you have a corresponding stabilization results for output injection and feedback stabilization, then it's almost certain that you can also do internal model controller design for that PDE model. Okay, thank you very much for listening.